Welcome back to another college football offseason video with the lineups team. Today we're breaking down the ACC. Super interesting conference with two teams at the top that have some college football championship hopes. Um, but yeah, top to bottom, a lot of interesting teams to dive into. We're going to start at the top with Clemson and Florida State, currently priced as the two favorites. Um, depending on the book you're at, I think you might see Clemson at a shorter number or Florida State at a shorter number. So, Cody, we'll start with you. Is there one of those two teams that you think should be more favored than Honestly, the other? no, not right now. Um, and that because of saying that, that's a big reason why me and you, we both played that Clemson plus 200 because that was just such a outrageous number that we found on MGM in comparison to the rest of the market. But it's the issue is is because Clemson really gave me nothing to believe in that they should be the clear cut number one after last year, even though I love every move that they made this off season. But I mean Florida State, oh boy, they are going to be an absolute juggernaut this year. But like Clemson, they also need to prove it. So because of that, that's a big reason why I don't think either of them have separated from each other until uh, we get a little more uh, some uh, stuff to work with here. Schwartz, any separation between those two teams that you see at the moment, or are you the same? No, I I mean, it's close. This is not one of my more impassioned picks in terms of I'm very confident in this one. I'm really not. Uh, but I'm giving the nod to Clemson. I know both teams have a very hyped quarterback. I'm in on Clemson's a lot more. Kay Klubnik, I'm a big fan of Dabo. Not a fan. I don't really like Dabo Swinney that much, but he is very, very good at what he does. He runs a great program, and when it comes down to it, I see Cody disagreeing, no, but no, I disagree no, with I his agree. disagreement. He's probably um, my most hated dingus oh. out in college football. I mean, he's great. He's gotten the better of Saban more than almost anybody else has, which is pretty un- – I mean, it's not routine for him, but it's unbelievable that it's been multiple times with different groups too. So that's pretty incredible. Um, I think even in-season, Florida State got too much hype last season. They, um, they finished 10th. They had, I, I respect that they had that three-game losing streak and came back strong and never lost again. But, I mean, they didn't beat another ranked team that was ranked at the time of the game the entire way last year. Even in their bowl, um, they played a really, really rough Oklahoma team. That was one of the worst Oklahoma teams I can remember, and they barely squeaked it out. And I, maybe I'm just not as high on some of the things that happened over the offseason for Florida State. I think they're one of the best teams in the country. Um, I mean, easily top top ten being a significant understatement, but uh, I would give Clemson the edge right now. I'm, I think I'm less on the fence between those two teams. The big difference between those two teams at the moment is the transfer portal. Uh, the basically the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of utilizing that form of roster building. Clemson resting on its laurels is one of the best recruiting teams in the country, whereas Florida State, one of the most active teams in the transfer portal, especially along the offensive and defensive lines. I think Brandon Fisk is a player who I'm – Really looking to stand out. Western Michigan defensive line transfer, uh, playing next to some talented players returning, including Jared Verse and Fabian Lovett. Uh, Cody, where are you at with these kind of roster building? Like, are you higher on one team or, or another based on the transfer portal or the recruiting side of things? Well, I'm definitely higher on everything that Florida State was doing when it comes into bringing in recruits because what bothers me with Clemson is that, like, I don't know if it's a dabble thing. They just don't believe in like the transfer portal like whatsoever. They're kind of still relying on those old school. Um, everything really goes through recruiting. So I mean, Florida State has the massive edge right there alone. And what's even crazy is Florida State also has a uh, really good returning production on offense to go with um, this kind of revamped defense that they're bringing in. So yeah, I mean, the clear edge does go to Florida State just on that aspect alone. Yeah, I think where Clemson takes some points back is going to be. Uh, with Kate Klubnik and his potential oh, yeah. as a former five-star recruited quarterback. I love the hire of uh, former TCU offense coordinator Garrett, Erla- Garrett Riley, um, replacing Brandon Streeter as the offense coordinator, and I think that's just going to increase the overall explosiveness for the offense. They were 104th in explosive plays last year. So that's a big area of improvement, and I think the defense should be very good again. Uh, you have Wes Goodwin back for another second season as defense coordinator, and a lot of returning talent at all three levels on the defense. So to me, Clemson um, is slightly better at the moment, but really I just think you're going to see both of these teams go back and forth all season. Um, You do the week four game, I believe week four, where Clemson hosts Florida State. So that game being at Clemson is huge uh, in the grand scheme of things. But I guess, um, I don't know, does anybody see any value in betting futures for either of these teams right now? 
Will, you go first. Um, it's kind of like you guys were talking about early on. There's so little separation that if you see a book that is um, kind of indicating that there is, it's probably something to jump on. Uh, either one of them could be a possible hedge opportunity if you're getting them um, anything beyond plus 200 because it, it should really come down to these two teams. But I, I think that there's an opportunity to bet on Clemson at anything above 200. That would be probably my favorite bet between those two teams. But I would almost rather be playing Dark Horses in the ACC for, um, for buyout or hedge out opportunities rather than um, actually trying to project the conference champion because you're not going to get particularly long odds on either Florida State or Clemson. Yeah, I second that. Um, uh, yeah, I second I'm, that because, like I said, like the only reason that we played Clemson in the first place is because we found right. that plus two hundred, plus two ten. So, like mm-hmm. right now, I I don't I don't want anything shorter. Even though I like project, it will probably be a rematch between Clemson and Florida State in the uh, conference final. Um, so, really, just my plus two hundred is just serving as a money line ticket because I gotta imagine that will be probably within three as well as a what it looks like it's going to be going into the week four matchup. But yeah, unless I'm finding something north of 200, I'm just I'm not playing a future on either of them. Yeah, uh, so I think we're pretty much in agreement there. Um, slight edge to Clemson for me, but gonna be fascinating to see how it plays out. I'm really excited to watch that Week One game, Clemson at Duke, uh, to see how Kate Clemnick looks in this new offense with Garrett Riley. But moving on to uh, a team a little bit further down the odds board and. Cody's favorite um, team, UNC, not wearing the gear today, which is a little disappointing in my opinion, but that's all right. Tell us why you like UNC this season, Cody. Well, okay, first off, it's just because I can't find my clothes. I think as I made it apparent in my last video, you know, everything's kind of just scrambled here. I literally have zero idea where my UNC gear is whatsoever. Um, but yeah, and... So this is an issue. So if you take 30 seconds into my Twitter, you can probably find a tweet that says the Lions are going 17-0 and winning the Super Bowl. Well, the issue is my optimism very rarely translates to my Tar Heels, especially when it comes to football, because we have been so irrelevant. Well, we have been irrelevant all 27 years of my life, soon to be 28. Um, but the reason I like them this year is because, one, we have the arguably top two quarterback in the league, um, if not one. I think he is the more pro-ready quarterback than Caleb Williams, but... I mean, I'm not going to ignore Caleb Williams' talent. And also because um, our continuity on offense and because we literally can't get any worse on defense than what we were last year. Even though, for some reason, we still brought back Gene Chizik. I don't know why. I would punch him in the face if I ever saw him in person. I can't stand him. He has ruined my life. But, (laughs) I mean, other than that... Well, the the beauty of having Drake May and um, a beefed up offensive line that we're bringing back, even though they weren't the greatest last year, I, I will always uh, give them a few, a few extra points for the continuity, is that just having that just elevates the rest of the game. We lost Josh Downs. We still have talent at receiver, but losing Josh Downs is going to be a big part. But like I said, with elevating the rest of the game, they'll, they'll still create separation. I'm not worried about it. And this year, we're kind of going back to our roots of two years ago. We're going to have a platoon at running back. Um, with kind of Elijah, uh, Elijah Green uh, running most of it. So, I mean, if we can get some ground game, which kind of eluded us last year, it's it's going to be something really special, at least on offense. If we could just get any sort of defensive production, then, yeah, I mean, this is to me, this is a Tier 1A and Tier 1B conference with uh, UNC firmly at the B. Schwartz, are you in agreement on this UNC team? I'm in agreement in a lot of ways. I mean, the defense definitely scares me a little bit. I, I don't think they're going to go... I mean, like Cody said, it would be hard to be worse, but I think it would be also hard to be a lot, lot better without making you know coaching changes, like you mentioned. But I do want to say, I'm always someone who's very skeptical of hyped-up college football quarterback classes coming into the NFL. Um, you'll hear me say a number of times this year, if you tune in, that I think that in a couple of years, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud will both be doing what we're doing right now, which is sitting on camera and talking about football instead of playing it. But um, unless they want to go to Canada. But um, this class is not one of those classes for me. Caleb Williams, NFL superstar. Uh, Drake May, NFL superstar. At least at the very top, it's not a class that I think is overhyped. I think both these guys are incredible. And I don't think it can be overstated that even when you have holes on your college football team, when you have a quarterback like that at this level, especially in a conference like the ACC, where not every single team is going to be championship caliber, man, a player like Drake May can paper over a lot of holes. And you've got a coach who's, um, I mean, 
hasn't done a lot in a while, but you've got a coach with a lot of experience who's been to the highest highs in Mac Brown um, leading the program. I think this, this won't necessarily be a championship team, but man, this might be one of the most fun teams of the country to watch. Uh, and I do think they do have the best. Uh, I'm not going to go with player. I think they do have the best quarterback in the country. So I, and they're not my pick to win the ACC. They are my favorite value to win the ACC, considering they're at like plus nine hundred, and Florida State and Clemson are both in the, in the, we talked about it like the plus one hundreds. Uh, so I'm not projecting it, but I definitely think that might be worth a sprinkle, considering uh, they only play Clemson. They don't play Florida State. So if um, Clemson is able to beat Florida State, uh, there is a chance that UNC could lose that game and still get into the conference championship. And then it's a late season game, so Clemson beating them twice in rapid succession might be might be kind of a tough ask. So it's not my prediction, but I do think that there's a there's a narrow path to the top and a very high ceiling for this UNC team uh, under Drake May. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to offer some pushback on UNC. Um, I just well I deserved. It's hard for me to imagine this defense improving while while Gene Shizik's still there. Um, added a couple of players in the transfer portal, and that's all fine and good. But I mean, this team was dead last in havoc last year. They had no push in the front seven, and I mean, every metric is going to tell you they were one of the worst defenses in the country last season. And their offense had to t- pick up a lot of that slack, and they did because Drake May is fantastic. But they also lost Phil Longa, their offense coordinator. And Chip Lindsay replaces him, has had some success at his previous stops, but I'm, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried that they're going to have some drop-off there, especially in terms of pace. Phil Longa, obviously one of the highest tempo coordinators in the country, and Chip Lindsay is, I think, going to be more conservative in that respect. But plenty of returning production for this team. I just – the coaching is a concern for me, and the defense, I think, is going to be pretty bad once again. So I think there's a chance that they're going to lose some games that are going to be head-scratchers where – their defense just doesn't show up on a given Saturday, and you're left like, "Wow, that really should have been one that they that they take that they took, but they just couldn't pull it out because of the defense." So, Cody, any pushback on all that? But from your end, I mean, I got a couple. Of notes. Yeah. So, one beauty, um, with especially with the uh, what we're bringing back, is we will have an improved defensive line. And one of our biggest issues, and it correlates to havoc, is we created a no pressure to opposing backfields or quarterback play. If we could just generate any sort of pressure, I mean, our defensive metrics are going to balloon up because we just allowed opposing quarterbacks just to do whatever they wanted to us. I mean, you give every, every, anyone ample time, they'll, they can easily shred a defense. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love that right there. Um, that's another concern of mine that you brought up. Um, new offensive coordinator, uh, drastically probably going to slow down our tempo, which that's not confirmed, and I haven't heard anything um, about it changing. So we'll see, I guess, when the time comes. But one thing I do want to note is, um, and it correlates, this is one of my win totals already, so I'm going to scratch it off right here. You can find a flat eight. I You could still play an eight and a half for a lot smaller. Um, do have a projected around nine. I personally grabbed uh, just the eight. So, I mean, I can at least push at eight and four. And North Carolina, they have a super friendly start of the schedule. Um, they are, I have them as G word favorites and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In eight of the first nine games alone, um, with the only one being not being as um, against at Minnesota. So I mean, I'm, I mean, if you start seven and one, eight and zero, oh, I mean, we're we're already at the number with plenty of hedge opportunities at the end. So yeah, um, G word level favorites against Miami, really? Uh, I have Miami as a down year this year. And would, yeah, but. G word is a big. It's a big. Uh, well, just, a big to me, tier. to me, a G word is anything over a seven point favorite. It's uh, Miami got ten po- uh, a little over nine. Uh, but th- but it doesn't matter. I mean, all these are going to change as we go throughout the season. We need more data as they play. But yeah, let's just as of right now when uh, making these futures. So yeah, it's one of my favorite win totals. Um, a flat eight, like I said, you can play eight and a half, but a lot of question marks. A lot of question marks on the defense. Schwartz, you're also on there over on the win total, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of, so Cody made a great point with the um, what should be a really strong start. I mean, even if they do somehow drop that Miami game, I mean, we're talking what like a six-two start. That's not terrible. And um, I think it's it can't be overstated that uh, they've done a very Alabama Georgia thing, and they are playing on November fourth at home. They are playing the Campbell Camels. I mean, that is like a pseudo-buy late in the season when you're going to have, like, 
Florida State and Clemson, I guess not playing each other, but still playing competitive football. Um, a lot of the country is going to be playing their toughest games of the year, and UNC is going to get a like a semi rest. Uh, they it could it could be the catalyst for a nice little surge before they go and annihilate Duke and then play in what could be one of the games of the year at Clemson shortly after. So yeah, I'm all over this over. Uh, I would like to say in terms of the offense transitioning away from uh, Phil Longo, obviously it's a problem, but. If you're ever going to lose an offensive coordinator, you want to have it happen while you have a star field general quarterback who does so much for himself on the field. I mean, what what is this guy not going to say? The new offensive coordinator is not going to say, hey, Drake, make really great choices with the ball and throw accurate passes. I mean, there's only so much you can do to screw up Drake May doing what Drake May is good at in a conference that's not the Big Ten or SEC. So not a national championship team here, but... Do I think that losing Longo, especially with a soft start to the schedule where they can gain confidence, is going to be a backbreaker? No. I think uh, there might be tougher times ahead when they don't have a Band-Aid like Drake May to paper over some of the issues, but this season could still be a lot of fun. Should be. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next team. Uh, Talking about UNC's easy schedule. Uh, That's going to bring me to my first win total, which is Louisville. Um, One of the easiest schedules in Power 5. I think I would count out, like, as Cody says, six G word wins personally, including the first four weeks of the season at Georgia Tech, home Murray State, at Indiana, and home Boston College. Uh, don't see them losing any of those. And they're third in returning production on offense, including Jack Plummer, who has played with new head coach Jeff Brom at Purdue in the past. Um, and I think Jeff Brom is going to be a massive, massive upgrade over his class Hatterfield right away for this team. Um, they do lose a lot of their pass rush production, but they went to work in the transfer portal uh, in the secondary, which I think helps their pass defense overall. And a big area of improvement for me is they were 119th on PFF in tackling, and that's ultimately oftentimes a coaching stat. And I think their defense is going to improve under Jeff Brom. I think just just from technique and consistency standpoint, I think things are going to be a lot better. Um this team is being discounted a little bit because they lost Malik Cunningham, who was one of the most electric players in the conference uh, for the past couple of years. But and what, but what they lose in those big plays, I think they gain in consistency. And I see this team as just winning a lot of games this season if you look at the schedule. So I might be intrigued to play them to win the ACC. I haven't done it, but I think there's a decent chance they get to the championship game and then you can hedge out of it. But no Florida State on the schedule. No Clemson on the schedule. Um, and their tougher games are going to be at home. Don't home Notre Dame. Carolina. What? Don't even have North Carolina. They don't even play North Carolina. Oh. Right, yeah. And their tougher games are at home against Notre Dame, Duke, Kentucky. Kind of all coin flip-ish games. So I just think there's a lot of outs for them to get to the over. Uh, I played it at 7.5. It's mostly 8 or 8.5 in the market now. But if you can still get a flat 8, I'm, I'm more than fine with it. Uh, Cody, any thoughts? Yeah, I don't got too much to add. Um, I don't got too much to add, but this was, uh, like you said, this was a schedule play for me. I mean, this this schedule is a joke. I I would be shocked if they don't go 4-0 and at least threaten a 5-0 with the NC State at the fifth game. And then we're talking about another easy stretch, especially the end. So even if for some reason they did slip up and they're hovering around that 7, I mean, beautiful uh, prime hedge spot with uh, Kentucky. So, yeah, that was a major reason why I played it early with you. Um, we, Like I said, we were fortunate enough to grab 7.5, and, and this thing has already jumped up to 8.5. Like, <laughs> I really love this piece. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we can move on to the next win total. Um, unless, Schwartz, you have any Louisville thoughts, but if not, I'll let you get into your next win total. Uh, I'll go a little bit into Louisville, but not deep. Um I think you guys are being a little uh, aggressive with the schedule and how easy it is. This is not Georgia's schedule. Frankly, it's not even Michigan's schedule. Uh, we, I, Wayne, do we have a Power 5 non-conference opponent? Uh, I don't think so. And UNC, or not UNC, sorry. Louisville actually has three, and that's not nothing, one of them being Notre Dame. So it's not a top-heavy schedule in the sense that they've managed to avoid the uh, Clemson, Florida State, and even UNC triumvirate. But there are, I mean... There's a lot of competitive football that can be played. I mean, some of these teams are not great Power 5 teams like Indiana, and we'll get into BC in a second, but I wouldn't be... I mean, the 7.5, I think, is a fine play. I think your flat 8 is just, like, begging to be begging. 
for a uh, for a push when we get to the end of the season. So that's just my take on it. I'm not going to play the under, but I'm just not touching this one. I might play under eight and a half if I can see that. Want to get your your, your, your next win total? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. That's a shirt. Um, hmm? So that's a sick shirt. Oh yeah, it's uh, from my sister who is currently a junior, a rising junior at Boston College. Uh, but BC is kind of an ancillary fandom for me. It's a uh, it's the college I had kind of grown up rooting for because I always planned on going there and then changed my mind at the last second uh, and went to Michigan, which is just like, man, it's been kind of painful at times, but. Right now, BC is not that much less painful, which brings me to the win total of five and a half. And I really never thought that I'd be in a spot to be watching BC and really sweating out a win total of five and a half. Uh, it's a program that has every ability to compete in the ACC, but I'm not going to go into a long rant about how I'm disappointed I am with things that have happened with this conference over the last several or this program over the last several years. I'm just going to talk about what's in front of them this year. They do have some winnable games early. Um, Northern Illinois was terrible in the MAC last year, and Holy Cross isn't even FBS. But the ACC slate has some tough ones. Um, Florida State right out of the gate. Going to Louisville, we've already talked about how that could be um, a tough team this year. Uh, Hopefully they don't lose to UConn again. That would be really disappointing. But going to Syracuse for what is kind of BC's big rivalry game, and then hosting Miami at the end of the season are... I don't know. It's kind of there's kind of some schedule features. I'm not a huge fan of, uh, especially it makes me upset when the red bandana game is probably not a winnable football game. That's the Florida State one uh, early on in the season on September 16th. I'm not. I think that the books did a decent job with a lot of the ACC win total. So this isn't one of the ones where I'm like, yeah, hammer that, get all over it, like I was when we were talking about LSU over nine and a half. That was insane. So I'm not. I wouldn't be stunned if BC breaks this one, and I'd be very happy, but I am playing BC under 5.5. Last year was one of the worst BC seasons I can remember, if not the worst. Um, I'm still not particularly happy about the quarterback situation, and it is not a positive at all, to say the least, that they lost Zay Flowers. It's, it's tough for a team like BC that doesn't have a ton of offensive firepower to lose a player like that and actually take a step forward. So... If they can play some defensive football and win games, I'd be happy. I love that brand of football, but man, I don't really, I don't know what the ceiling for this team is. Yeah, I'm on the opposite end of this one, um, despite you being the one wearing the Boston College shirt. But I'm taking the over on BC. Um, I think Jeff Halfley gets this team back to bowl eligibility this season. Uh, last year was really rough for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is the offensive line was one of the most injured in the country, and it played out in them just just being horrible up front. Uh, dead last in the country in rushing yards and 126th in sacks allowed. Love that Christian Mahogany is healthy and didn't transfer. Also brought in a couple of transfers to uh, support the offensive line, but really just injury luck should boost them a ton. Um, and I think this defense has a lot of uh, really nice players that didn't get the opportunity to show it a ton last season, but they were top 40 in average line yards, 31st in stuff rate, and the secondary has a lot of pieces as well. So, I just look at this, and you have eight games against teams that didn't go bowling last year. Uh, manageable out of conference, like you said, Northern Illinois, Holy Cross, Army, UConn. Like, there, there's a lot of outs for me on the schedule. Uh, no Clemson on the schedule, and don't have to play Notre Dame or Rutgers. So, to me, I, I think Boston College is just going to be steady. Um, certainly not saying they're going to win the conference or come close, but I think they get back to ball eligibility, and I like taking the over on, on the five and a half. It's a bit of a positive regression play from everything that went wrong last season for them. Cody, do you have a tiebreaker on Boston College or just to stay away from you? I honest, honest to God, I don't. So that was kind of a fun little uh, who's going to sell me on what. But um, I think I'm just going to stay neutral on this one. Um, I did Actually, no, I take that back. I did sprinkle a little on a under 5.5 because I found a I found a, um, it was like plus like 125. It was something just absurd, uh, way different from everywhere else. I sprinkled a little on that. I think I logged it in. But um, but yeah, I, I really got nothing. Um, this conference as a whole, I really didn't have like a second big bet. And if we yeah. want to, do we want if we want to leave that into my next one? Go for it. Um, but yeah, so my like, well, like I just said, I didn't really have like two like win totals. I just absolutely love this conference as a whole. It's just so like mucked up after really 
Clemson, Florida State, UNC, and um, and Louisville. Because, um, like I said, I'm on the Louisville over. I like that one. But, yeah, my next one is um, Pitt, uh, under 7, flat 7. Um, universally around 6.5. You can find 7 for um, the 6.5 is juice to the over. You can find 7 and a lot more even. Um, I think I'm, I got plus 100, yep. Um, and I personally would only take it at the seven. I would avoid the six and a half. Um, and for me, um, it's a really, really simple handicap. Not even going to go that much in depth to it, but it's just, um, a horrible, horrible returning production on both sides of the ball. They lost seven defensive starters to the NFL in the draft, which is just absurd. Um, <laughs> that, um, but yeah, so there is a whole new look, uh, defense. Um, it's, it's always a scary situation for me. And then um, the offense, I'm, I'm not too thrilled with. And also, I'm just not a Phil uh, Jerkovich believer. Um, not even a believer. I just, I'm, I, he doesn't do it for me. Um, he's not going to elevate the offense. And this is kind of a rare situation where Pitt really doesn't have like a superstar running back that we kind of been accustomed to lately. That kind of really helps out the rest of the offense. They have two decent running backs. Maybe one will take a step up. I don't know. Um, but one thing I do want to push back on my own bet. Um, <laughs> selling you on it and I'm pushing you away from it on um, the schedule uh, normally a huge part of my handicap to every win total but this time the schedule kind of actually scares me a little easy chance to start 2-0 and um, if they go 3-0 and I'm kind of getting a little worried I am kind of high in West Virginia uh, where everyone else is kind of low but the North Carolina game, fourth game in that is going to be a huge make or break for both of my win totals ironically um, I do believe North Carolina should cruise past them if the defense isn't what I think it's going to be for Pittsburgh and if North Carolina's defense shows up whatsoever. If North Carolina can stop them there, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable, but the reason I want the flat seven, like I said, just in case, really easy schedule. Um, and then really if it all comes down to the very end, you do have a really beautiful head opportunity with Duke, which you would have to take Pitt on that side. They would be a dog in that situation. If you want to, if you take a six and a half you have in your head situation or if you just want to kind of push on your uh push on the push which ironic um but yeah pittsburgh under seven really only other one total i like other than uh what we've already kind of previously discussed yeah this pit team was awesome last year um and fifth in epa allowed on defense and just lost like almost all their best players uh including israel abanakanda so. on offense who was one of my favorite running backs to watch in the country last year um mm -hmm. Schwartz, are you a full Jerkovich believer as a Boston College guy? Um, man, is there profanity allowed on this? Because uh, I think I've broken it like multiple. Um, my sister texted me last year. Um, my sister's not a big football fan at BC, but she texted me, "Is our quarterback supposed to be good or something?" And I, there was a paragraph she got back. That guy is terrible. I don't think. I don't know how he got a scholarship, not just to BC, but to a Power 5 school. I don't know how he's done it a second time. It, it might just be because he's big and people are obsessed with big-bodied quarterbacks because they think Josh Allen's a good quarterback or something like that. But no, I am not a Phil Jerkovich believer. I'm also not an Emmett Moorhead believer, and we didn't get into that at all with the BC sure, handicap, Wayne. I would love to know how you, what, quarterback, what quarterback you think wins them six games. But no, I'm not a Phil Jerkovich believer. I haven't really looked into the um, selling on pit this year but yeah it sounds like a really good idea i kind of forgot about big phil because uh, as soon as he got out of chestnut hill i let him leave my mind forever because i don't want to devote any more um emotional capacity to phil jerkovic and what he does on a football field ever again but yeah no i'm not a phil jerkovic guy i'm very happy he's out and i'm really happy he's still in the acc yeah i think defensively pit will probably still be okay uh pat narduzzi um they're going to bring a lot of pressure, and it works for them because they have one of the best cornerback tandems in the ACC with MJ Devonshire and Marquise Williams. But the front seven just lost so much, and it's difficult to imagine it being nearly as good as last year. Um, I guess we can backtrack for a second, and I'll talk about Emmett Moorhead. But, yeah, I, I like it. I like what I saw from him last season. Um, I think he's an upgrade over Phil Jerkovich, and I like that he got his foot wet, his feet wet in his redshirt freshman season. Um that game against Duke was awesome, 330 yards and four touchdowns and against a really good Duke defense. But overall, I think behind an offensive line that isn't just missing every single player to injury like it was last year, I think he'll look a lot better. So, yes, they lose a Flowers, but I think the passing game could honestly be better just by virtue of the offensive line being healthier. Um, so that's where I'm at with Boston College. Um, let's now jump into 
a little Heisman talk because I think this this conference is really fascinating from a Heisman perspective. Handful of top candidates at um, for these teams. You're going to have Jordan Travis around fourteen to one, Kate Klubnick uh, around fourteen to one. I say twenty to one on Kate Klubnick, um, and then Schwartz. I saw you wrote down Drake May as well. So, hmm? where do you see that twenty? I don't know if this is a stale yeah, number. I don't know if this is a stale number, but I see Caesars has it potentially, but I'd have to check. Um, Caesars, wow, Jesus! I'd have to check though. Those are, those are stale sometimes. Um, I'll start with you, Schwartz. Is there a quarterback out of those three, Travis, Klubnik, and Drake May, that you're the most invested in to win the Heisman? First of all, I want to say that that could literally almost be the stage. I think two of them are going to be on the stage. Um. One of them will be the winner of Florida State versus Clemson. And the if it happens twice, whoever wins the conference. And the other is going to be Drake May. Um, all these other conference videos we've done, if anyone's watched the Big Ten and the SEC so far, uh, we've talked Heisman each time. I've said, this is my favorite guy here, but it's definitely not my pick. That's coming in the ACC video. It's between Cade and Drake May for me. I, it's, I think it's just such a tough instance of betting between individual production and team success. Uh, it's good. it's a really tough one, especially when one of the guys loses to the other guy. I think Drake's the best quarterback in the country, uh, but I do think there's a very, very good chance that they're not able to get by Clemson, and that tape will be there. Will be a Heisman moment in that game if Cade puts up a good performance. But you also have to look at guys in the past who have had to carry a team that doesn't have much of a defense and got them to high heights. When we were talking about all the things that North Carolina can do um, in terms of pushing pace, Drake making good decisions, and being um, accurate with the ball, but the defense not giving them anything. It made me think of Wayne Pride knows exactly what I'm about to say. Makes me think of uh, Baker's Heisman season, which is, I don't care what he's done in the NFL, it's one of the best Heisman seasons from a pure pocket passer in the modern era. So, I, um, or best any quarterbacking seasons in college. So yeah, for me it's Drake May. I guess I'll put my stamp on it. Drake May is my guy to win the Heisman. I'm picking him this year. But Cade is a close number two, and if they are able to get through the ACC, particularly if they're able to do it 12-1 and or 13-0, and I would probably have to shift a little bit. I mean, I'm going to sprinkle on both for sure, but I'm going to go Drake, Cade, and I'm really not as high on Jordan Travis as some guys are, but obviously if uh, the Seminoles are able to run up on Clemson a little bit and win the conference, then Travis will at least be on the stage, if not, if not the winner. So I, I just checked that Cade number was, was definitely stale. It's 14 to one on Caesars. So I apologize for that. So what, and what is, what is Drake's on the um, So on Caesars currently, Jordan Travis and Cade are both 14 to one and Drake is 16 to one. Yeah. Especially at that number, uh, Drake's definitely my guy. Cody, any, any thoughts on those three quarterbacks? Um, I, I, I do have a pick actually, uh, for this conference. Um, and I'm also on Cade. Um, and because what I do is I like to correlate my, well, one, I do a portfolio, so multiplayers, obviously. And I like to correlate my players with, um, being on teams who I think are going to probably, or not probably, who are going to make it to the conference championship. It's no secret. We talked about Clemson. And, um, so yeah, if Clemson's going to make it, the man who's going to do it's going to obviously be uh, off the arm of Cade. And another, uh, reason why I love it so much is because of the new offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley, we're really going to see a, a spread type approach, more heavier, uh, air raid. And, um, I mean, it's just giving him the opportunity to put up video game type numbers. Defense still going to be elite. They're going to get offenses off the field in a pinch. They're going to give their own offense ample extra opportunities. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, of, of the three, I'm, I'm definitely signing with Cade over the others. Um, the issue with Drake May, he can put up all the numbers he wants, but if this defense doesn't show up and they lose these stupid games that I'm fully expecting, um, then he's, he's going to lose just by default in, in, that, in, in that sort of sense. And then Jordan Travis, love him too. Heavily, I would have put him too. Uh, I would put him above Drake May in the Heisman opportunity just because of Florida State's just a better overall team. But um, just haven't pulled that trigger yet. Maybe I'll add a few more to the portfolio. I'm sure he'll be like next in line to get, uh, to get in there. But, uh, yeah, of the three, I'm, I'm siding with Cade. One quick thing I want to say on Travis, and uh, from both an individual and team's perspective, in terms of this is this goes beyond the ACC because, obviously, all of your performances go into the Heisman. Uh, well, he's got some tough ones that a lot of guys, that the other guys aren't going to have. I mean, uh, they're opening the season with LSU. I think they're going to lose that. So, they're, so he's starting off on the wrong foot. 
a lot of Heisman, Heisman, Heismans, Heismen, I don't know, that we've seen have uh, gone kind of wire to wire, not as the favorite, but as one of the guys, someone who came on strong and fought hard all year. So that's terrifying. And then they have a road. Um, actually, I don't know if it's, it's listed as road, but I don't know if they play it at neutral site. Um, Florida versus Florida State. Uh, no, it is in Gainesville. They, they end the season in Gainesville. This is not a good Florida team, but that is a game that could end up being disastrous um, just because just because of the way rivalry college football is, especially in an SEC atmosphere at the end of the season. So I'm a little afraid of... Um, they use, they, it's, it's great to take a look at cross-conference games because it gives, it gives a nationwide perspective to these guys. I'm a little nervous what Travis and Florida State might do when they're given a chance to show what they've got against the rest of the country. Um, and those are bookends to the season. So bad first impression, bad last impression, almost doesn't matter what you do in the middle if that's what happens. Yeah, Kate Klubnik is my pick as well, Cody. Um, I just think the upside is tremendous for this Clemson team. I think there is a potential chance that they win the conference with one loss, um, maybe even undefeated, but you know, I don't want to predict that. But I just think this team has so much talent from top to bottom with their recruiting. And like you said, the Riley arrival is massive. Um, Klubnik in his own right, former five-star recruit, number one quarterback in his class, and the stats last year were underwhelming, but I think this offense is just going to look so different. And they have plenty of playmakers in-house and a very strong offensive line as well. Um, yeah, I, I just – I think Klubnik has an awesome season. And you look at what TCU accomplished last year with worse talent than what Riley's going to be working with in uh, Clemson. And I think this offense is going to be among the, the best in the country this year. So Klubnik is my pick. Twin Heisman at 14-1. to 1. Uh, I think there's an argument to be made for Drake May, but despite his pure talent as a passer, I'm just worried about the surrounding uh, situation for him. And also, I think some teams started to figure out last year that if they played too high against him and forced him to kind of dink and dunk and take away the the big, big explosive plays, um, like you've seen in the NFL with some of these uh, top quarterbacks, he struggled at times to do that, including against Clemson in that conference championship game. And... I do wonder if some of these defenses use that more frequently against Drake May, and with the new offensive coordinator, could see some rough patches from him. So, Kate is my pick for that one. Um, any other thoughts from either of you guys on that? No, I fully muted. agree, especially on the Drake May part. <laughs> there you go. There's the unmute. Um, Wayne, uh, to clarify, is Cade your ACC best bet, or is he your highest? No, he's, he's my he's my prediction on that one. Yeah, I think it's going to stay in the ACC, and that's such a weird thing for me. I mean, Cody, you haven't heard me talk about his college football for as long, but Wayne has heard me be such an ACC hater. I've always thought it's kind of a joke of a conference that thinks it's a little SEC, but really it's barely more than a Big 12. Uh, but this year is a serious season for the ACC. I think there is it's a legitimate multi-team, not just two-team, multi-team conference title battle, which we haven't seen from them. I think the non-division thing is going to be excellent for the ACC. And it's got, I mean... When's the last time we saw three or even, you know, two really, really high-end um, players be in the ACC at the same time like this? I think it's super exciting. We're going to have some really cool games. And, uh, yeah, for, especially from an individual perspective, it's going to be a cool ACC season to watch. ACC season. I'm glad you brought up the divisional thing. I think probably should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but we'll, we'll get it in there in the end. Um, no more divisions in the ACC, so previously you wouldn't be able to see Clemson and Florida State playing each other in the conference championship, but that is possible this year and is my predicted outcome. Um, bit of a, a bump for, or a bit of a knock for UNC, I should say, uh, given that they can't just win their division and make the championship game, but they have to be one of the top two teams in record. So important to note there. Uh, Cody, any final thoughts on the ACC before we get out of here? No, not really at all, and I, um, I'm glad you just brought that up because um, I think one of you mentioned it earlier, but I'm kind of debating on adding a little uh, Louisville to win the ACC just because their schedule alone, they can make them a top-two team easily, especially if Florida State stumbles with LSU and loses to Clemson. That's opening the door for someone else. Um, so, yeah, I debated on adding Louisville just because their schedule alone might will put them at least top of the uh, up in up at the top of the conference, maybe they could sneak in. They won't win it. They're going to get clobbered, actually. <laughs> um, but, um, but, yeah, I would love to have that ticket just to see if I could hedge some pennies out of it, just secure something. Or if I have, or if they're going against my Clemson ticket, I don't have to do anything. Just let it ride. Yeah. It's worth noting that the LSU 
that playing LSU wouldn't actually affect an ACC ticket. But um, yeah, they could definitely have some bumps in the road. Uh, the other well, thing with the with the format any tiebreaker wouldn't be overall record. Or does or does Louisville play? You mentioned LSU who's in the SEC. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know if that was a mistake. I don't know if they. Uh, but, but if they. But if the oh, is overall record a tiebreaker? Yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. It's. I think they'd probably go common opponents first. But oh, you would. Yeah, I could be so wrong. Um. Anyhow, um. One big, a couple big things for the format with me. One is it's the rematch effect, and uh, we'll be talking about this soon. Not this season, but with the fact that Michigan and Ohio State might be playing twice in seven days, uh, in the near future. And, oh my God, is that going to be hard for either team to sweep? But uh, if it does end up being Clemson and UNC, the games would be about two weeks apart. That's a really hard, that's a really hard proposition to beat a really good team twice, uh, whichever direction it is. And I, the other thing I want to note is that uh, with divisions being gone, the schedules are a little different. We've talked about who has to play who, who doesn't have to play who, uh, namely that Louisville doesn't have to play really anyone. But uh, between those big three, uh, Clemson is the only one who has to play both of the other two. I think that's worth uh, noting for sure that I think we're all in uh, kind of a line that they should be the team to look out for this conference. But all it would take would not being their best on one or both of those two Saturdays. They've got more chances to stumble against top teams than anyone else. So, like I said, exciting year in the ACC. Even the best teams aren't going to get a free pass to 12-0 and 0 or 13-0 and 0 as Clemson has had in the past. It's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, should be a lot of fun to watch. Um, but the Louisville ticket is going to be my favorite on the board at the moment. I don't see a ton of value with Clemson or Florida State and with the record like we were talking about. Um, I'm going to Vegas tomorrow. Today is July 27th, and I will be looking for a Louisville 10-1 to ticket or better um, to add in my portfolio. So, That'll wrap it up for us. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys enjoy watching what should be a really fun ACC this season. Uh, catch you guys for another video very soon.